How would you describe the state of Michigan's roads? Well, I, I think it's, it's no secret that uh, for the past 40 years, we have not invested enough in our roads. Uh, Michigan is ranked 46 out of 50 states as far as investing per capita in our roadways. I think the biggest frustration for me is because for somebody who's worked in MDA for 29 years, we've been doing a lot of bandage work for, I mean, for as long as I can remember. And we've been on record for as long as I can remember saying we need funding. This is going to get worse. This is going to get worse. The longer we wait, the more expensive it's going to get. Explain to people how building roads have changed over the last 29 years. What's different than what we were doing all those years ago to what we're doing now and how we're building our roads in Michigan? Well, obviously the technology has improved, number one. Uh, we are putting a lot of uh, technology in, uh, devices out there. But two, the, the, the basic building of roads from the ground up with uh, you know, tearing it out, put a new base and a new aggregate base and all that, uh, the sequence of building the road has really not changed. What's changed, why it's becoming more and more so obvious now is that our roads are old. Uh, I-75 in Oakland County, is that freeway was built in the 60s. A good, well-designed and well-constructed road should last you about 30 years with good maintenance. You can get another 10 years out of it. That's almost 60-year-old roadway. So you haven't been digging down to the bottom again and starting over with the full rebuild of a road. Ex it's been, what, a, a, a cheaper kind of just resurface? Exactly. We all, for instance, I'll give you an example. You have $200 million. You have a choice. Do you build about 11 miles of I-96 freeway out here between Howell and Weberville? Or do you spend that, spread that $200 million dollars to so, many, so you can touch so many other roadways that are needed. So that's what we've been doing, spreading the money as far as we can, doing uh, just mill and resurface, take out about two inch and put two inch back. So when people see that, they say, well, they think you've rebuilt the road, right? Because it looks nice for that very short period of time. But in five, seven years, they start seeing cracks, they start seeing uh, uh, maintenance crew out there patching the road, they, they start wondering, what do you, you just built this road. Is that the biggest complaint that you usually Absolutely. get from people saying, look, you already did 696, why are there two lanes closed back again and you guys are doing something like resurfacing? Exactly. And that's, that's, the, that's the key. When, what we've been trying to do is educate the public about this, that we really did not dig everything out and reconstruct it. There's the difference between reconstructing and resurfacing. So then people will wonder, all right, this gas tax that the governor is talking about, mm -hmm. $2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. So is that rebuild? Is that the money that we need to rebuild these roads? Or is that more patch and fix work? So the idea is that when we get this money, we are going to start doing a mix of fixes. There's a lot, there are some roadways that, are, that needs reconstruct now. We're going to try to bring those uh, advance those kind of projects and start reconstructing them. But there are some that still have some shelf life that we could do some resurfacing to buy us five or more so years so that, you know, we can catch up. Because again, the workload. So is that enough? Is that dollar amount enough? Because we haven't even talked about bridges yet. Mm -hmm. And does that include bridges? Because we look and say there are some reports out saying that 10% of Michigan's bridges are in poor condition. That is correct. And they're in, in critical need of repair. That is correct. Does that include? Well, the, the governor, part of the governor's plan is to also, we've identified about 11 to 1200 bridges all over the state right now, that what we are going to do is bundle these bridges together and then put those out as separate uh, uh, bid. It's going to be um, more or less binding to, to fix these bridges. And what about money for maintenance? Even well, if you have the money to build the good road, you then have to maintain it. You can't just let it alone for the next five, seven years. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I, when we do this uh, town hall meetings, I always use Florida, uh, comparison between Michigan and Florida. Uh, because when I use Michigan and Ohio, people will say, well, Ohio has more lane miles than we do. I say, okay, fine, you got me there. So Florida, if you look at Florida's lane miles compared to Michigan lane miles, it's almost identical. They have 
122,000 lane miles. We have 122,000 lane miles, maybe a few more uh, thousand over us. Bridges, they have 12,000, we have 11,000, so very close. But the difference is that Florida spends $1 billion a year in maintenance of their road. We spend about $330 million. On maintenance. Maintenance. And I would say, uh, objectively, we should be spending more than Florida because we have to plow snow and we have to, you know, salt and all that other stuff that we do here that they don't do. Obviously, they have hurricane and, but even in the, in the funding aspect, they spend about $6.1 billion a year. We only spend about $1.4, $1.5 billion. It's a huge difference. And that's who the, why the condition of our roadway is what it is out there. I'm sure you're hearing a lot in, t in the town halls about trust mm -hmm. and trusting that the government is spending people's tax monies to fix the road in the best way possible. Would you say that MDOT has been the most efficient in terms of fixing the roads with what resource that they've had? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, absolutely. I can give you so many examples of that. Uh, we at MDOT are very mindful of exactly that. Uh, we've done as I mentioned, a whole lot with very little resources. Uh, our needs out there are huge. And uh, the, the other communities, the counties and the cities are all in the same boat. So we've been forced to try and spread the dollar as much as we can to, to, make, uh, to, to, to keep things going. So yes, part of that building trust is also establishing transparency, right? A lot of uh, the general public does not understand how, number one, how we pick projects, how we fund them, and the whole sequence of getting from planning to building the road. So one of the things we are looking at doing is establish a statewide map that will show, that will pinpoint every location of projects that we have out there. It'll, it'll start from uh, conception to conclusion. Anywhere along that process, you can go in there, click on that, little dot and the, the, the roadway will pop up. You can see where we are in the planning process, in the design process, in the construction process. How much have we spent to date? Are we below or above budget? And on and on and on. But I, I believe part of that whole 2015 uh, cycle, we, we did not do a good job of educating the public that uh, we're only committing 600 million right now and the other 600 million is gonna come later. And also, I, I think people believe that was the end or be or cure or uh, solution to the, to the problem, not understanding that that was just a, a stop gap. So I do hear that frustration. And I think, uh, quite frankly, for us now in 2019, having this conversation, like, we just had this conversation. We haven't seen any, any difference. So that, that's part of the frustration that I see. Uh, it's not so much that the governor's asking for 45 cents. It's okay. Even if we give you this money, uh, we're going to see a difference. And, and I can understand that frustration as well.